We are just getting started. If you are watching on the replay, I just want to let you know that if you want to be here live for when this stuff happens in real time, make sure that you have your no your notifications turned on. That's the best way to find out when I'm going live. And for these monthly cook with me's, I also do these on the first Thursday of every month. So this is a regularly scheduled thing. So if you want to be here when it happens, and those are a couple things to know. Um, if you are watching on the replay, we are going to be waiting a little bit here to get started while people, you know, get their notifications and come in and join and everything. So it'll be a little while before we get into the food, but I'm doing a pork chop, roasted, veggie, mashed potato situation. So that's what you have to look forward to. Feel free to skip ahead if you'd like, or just hang out with me here while I wait for the people to get here in real time. And I've also got my tablet over here so that I can see comments as they come in while we're moving the camera all around and showing the food and all of that. And as people join, you know, let me know where you're joining from, where you are, um, how your day is going, and then we will get started and start cooking things as I see people come in. Oh no, I'm really excited for this meal. This is gonna be a good one, I think. Um, it's something that I don't make as often, so I'm excited for that. Um, and it seems like, oh, Nita's here. Hi, Nita. Nita says hi from NYC. Glad to see you. It seems like not as many people are on as usual at the beginning. Um, I don't know if that's because the weather's getting nicer, people are doing other things, but that's cool if um, we want to go ahead and get started. I'll wait a little bit longer and see if a couple more people show up. But I've tried to get everything out here and prepped. Um, so we're ready to go once we get going. And as you hop on, say hello, let me know where you're watching from or how your day is going or anything like that, just so I know that you're here. And I will get a couple more things set up here while we wait for people to come on. I'm doing pretty good today, in case you're wondering. Um, I'm having this weird thing with one of my fingers. I don't know if I like jammed it. I don't remember hurting it, but then it's kind of been bothering me today, so. Hopefully that's nothing serious. I mean, it hasn't gotten in the way of me doing the things I need to do, but it's just kind of like annoying every once in a while I notice it and I'm like, that doesn't feel normal. Okay, well let's get into the food stuff. And then as people come on, we can chat. If you have any questions, uh, cooking questions, nutrition questions, just anything really, um, you know, that's what this is for. It's for us to hang out and chat. So we are gonna start with the veggies for tonight's dinner um, and We've got a few different things we're doing. I'm trying to figure out where do we want to start. Uh, let's start with the mushrooms. So one thing we're doing for tonight's dinner is some roasted vegetables. So I've got some mushrooms here that we're going to roast up. Um, Jason, my husband, loves mushrooms, so these are mostly for him. Oh, Natalie's here. Natalie says watching from Maine. Hello. Can't wait to see what you've got cooking. Awesome. Glad to see you, Natalie. Um, so first thing we're cooking is these mushrooms. So they're a little dirty, as you can see. So I'm just going to wipe these off. Um, and mushrooms, from what I've heard and what I've been told, I don't know if there's been any real side-by-side -side comparisons, but you're not supposed to rinse them off because they can absorb water. So really what you should do is just wipe them with a damp cloth. So I have a paper towel that I've just um, run under the faucet, but we're just gonna wipe off to get any of that dirt off. And if a little bit stays on there, that's not that big of a deal, but you know, to get the vast majority of it off. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. And so while we do this, we can just chit chat. Um, so garden stuff, let's talk about garden stuff. I don't know how many of you um, saw the live stream where I was starting peppers last week. That was a week ago today, actually. Um, so I started peppers last week, and if you follow me on Instagram, then you've seen that a lot of the peppers have started to come up and sprout. We still have some that haven't, and then I started tomatoes um, this past weekend, and those are starting to sprout. So we've got the lights on on the grow rack, and things are going well, so I'm excited. Oh, and I mentioned on my Instagram stories today that... I ordered more tomato seeds today, which is nuts because um, we have 74 seeds that I planted and for tomatoes and we have are planning for about 50 tomato plants in the garden. Um, 
so we really don't need any more but it's this variety that we really wanted Jason really wanted them especially and when we went to order they were out of stock so I checked the little thing that's like let me know when this comes back in stock and I never received an email well I just was on the website today looking and I was like let me see if those if they have them and they did so I asked Jason I was like should we get these should we just wait till next year they'll be a little late but we can still you know um, get them in if we plant them right away and he was like do it don't wait go for it so I ordered those so we're gonna have even more tomatoes um let me pull up the comments over here instead of me touching the screen over there um okay nita says how are you and jason doing can't wait to see your garden when it's all grown it's going to be beautiful i'm really excited i always get so excited for all the stages of the garden um we're doing pretty well uh nothing you know super out of the ordinary going on i guess the big thing right now is the garden stuff and just trying to get all of that, all of that where it needs to be. Um, I need to go out there and start doing some tidying up in the garden. I need to get out there and um, start planting some things. Like I need to start planting cool weather crops like lettuce and radishes. This is the time of year to do that. So that's what I really need to be doing. The weather's kind of, it's still doing that you know, flippy floppy thing it does in the spring where we'll have a beautiful 70 degree day and then it'll be a little cooler. Um, so we'll see when I'm actually able to get out there, but I need to make time for it and make it happen. All right, we're working through the mushrooms. We're getting there. I know washing me clean mushrooms probably isn't the most exciting thing, but we're working our way through them. Maybe in the future, if we do mushrooms, I can clean them beforehand because <laughs> I think y'all get the idea. Let me know, are y'all mushroom fans? I think mushrooms are a food that like are pretty one way or the other. I think most, most people feel pretty strongly, or at least I guess the people who talk about it feel strongly that they really like mushrooms or that they don't. So I'd like to know where y'all fall on that. And is that because you're just not a fan or are they not something that you grew up with? Because I didn't grow up having mushrooms a lot. And I don't dislike them, but I don't really like them either. They're just kind of fine to me. It's like, whatever, take it or leave it. But I do wonder, like, if my parents were super big uh, mushroom fans, then would I be more into them? But Jason, they're, like, one of his favorite things, which is funny. Because, I mean, I just don't get it. I'm like, they're fine. There's nothing wrong. But there's nothing with them to be excited about. But, I mean, I think he probably feels the same way about some of the foods I like, like zucchini which is one of my favorites, but he's like, eh, not that great. Um, so are any of you mushroom people or does it depend on what, how it's cooked? I know a lot of people say mushrooms are slimy, um, which I can kind of get that, especially depending on how they're prepared. They can kind of have a texture, I guess, that a lot of people don't love. For those of you just joining, we are cleaning mushrooms right now. We're gonna roast these bad boys up and I'm just wiping them with a damp paper towel to get the dirt off. Natalie says that she loves mushrooms. Okay, so we have one mushroom fan in the group at least. Um, yeah, I mean, I usually roast them, also putting them on pizzas. That's kind of a standard way we use them. That's about it. I've been roasting them and then putting them in a frittata here lately. That's been pretty good. Um, and I guess, I mean, you can do other things, but that's kind of the way that I use them most often. Okay, we're getting down to the end here. I promise we're almost done cleaning mushrooms. This is the last one. I'm gonna wipe this off, try to get as much dirt off as I can, and then we're just gonna rock with it because a little dirt never hurt anybody. Okay, I'm gonna wipe a little bit off my cutting board though. All right, mushrooms are cleaned. Now we are gonna cut these up. So I'm going to take the camera and I'm gonna tilt you down um, so that you are facing the cutting board and you can see what's going on. But I will be able to see your comments on the tablet over here. So feel free to keep asking questions and commenting and chatting and all that. And I will see what you're saying over here on the side. Um, let me get that pulled back up. Okay, so this is always the part I try to do it as smoothly as smoothly as possible so you don't get motion sick. <laughs> but we will see if that is a good angle. Let's see, what do we think? That's pretty good. I think we could go a little bit more maybe. Oh, uh, that's all right, okay. Um, let's see. So we've got all the mushrooms here. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to quarter most of these. The bigger ones we'll probably chop into sixths. Sixths, 
that's not an easy word to say. Okay, so I'm just cutting these in half and then cutting them in half again. So we have nice little quarters. Um, so they'll roast up nice and pretty. And so I'm just gonna run through all of these and do that. And the one thing about mushrooms, I guess, is they are pretty easy to prep other than the cleaning. But I think that is, it's a kind of task that's really good if you have other people helping you in the kitchen, especially if you have kids, um, because that's a task that even very small children can do, is get a damp paper towel and um, clean the mushrooms. So definitely recruit some helpers if you wanna make that process a little bit tidier. But yeah, we're just running through. I'm doing kind of doing the small ones first. And we're gonna get these all quartered up. And this is just nice because it's going to increase the surface area. So that means we're gonna get more, you know, nice crispy caramelized bits when we roast these up in the oven. Um, we've got a few more small ones. And the thing here is we just wanna to try to make sure they're all about the same size, um, all of our pieces so that they cook in about the same amount of time. Like this one's a little bit bigger, but I think I'm still gonna quarter that one. It's only the really gigantic mushrooms that I'm gonna have to cut into smaller pieces. Oh, Nita says they look great, thanks. The mushrooms did all the hard work. I'm just doing the chopping. Um, and if you're wondering about this knife, because I know a lot of people ask about tools and stuff, this is my favorite chef's knife that, that I use in all my live streams. Um, you can find that in my Amazon store, a link to it. So there is a link to that below this video in the description. Um, so if you go there, then you can find this knife and a lot of other tools that I use in the kitchen um, and books and all kinds of stuff. Like it's just basically my favorite things. So if you ever wanna see that stuff, that's there. So I, you can see I'm cutting this one into six. And that store is also a nice way to support the channel because I do make a small percentage of what you spend over there. So, you know, it's the same price for you, but then Amazon gives me a percentage for referring you to them. So if you wanna support what I'm doing or if you gotten value out of my stuff, and that's the way you can do it. Okay, so I've got all the mushrooms chopped up. Now I'm gonna turn you back basing right up, okay. There we go, that's pretty good. All right, um, and we are gonna get these on a pan. So I'll turn you a little bit. Oh, Jasmine's World says those look good. Good, I'm glad you think so. Hopefully they will look even better once we get them cooked up. Also, Jason just walked in the house, so if you hear any rattling or shaking or him stomping around, that's what that is. Um, good, or you can say hi to Jason. If you like. So I'm getting the mushrooms on this sheet pan. And we are going to, and one sheet pan is about enough. See, the thing when you're roasting is you want to make sure that everything has enough space. If it starts getting piled up on top of itself and everything, then stuff is just going to steam, which there's nothing really wrong with that, but it's not what we're going for. So this is a good amount for that. So that's one sheet pan. Now we're going to do another vegetable. So I'm going to turn you back facing this way. There we go. Um, all right. So... Did you do that? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, There's nothing special. So I'm gonna turn, y'all that's pretty good. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is Brussels sprouts, which are Jason's favorite, right? Yeah, you know it. Jason's not a super big fan Did of Did you Brussels see sprouts. that thing where uh, some people got Brussels sprouts and they cooked? So you're not just a disembodied yeah. voice. <laughs> I just came from the gym kind of sweaty. Some people took Brussels sprouts and like, Covered them in icing and made like cake pops, but they were Brussels sprouts oh, on the inside. Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> I thought it was fun. Yeah, I don't like that. that I don't like tricking people. It, with it seems to me, but it does seem like a good April Fool stroke. Um, okay, so I just saw that Nita just asked a question. It says, "How does it work buying from your Amazon affiliate if someone already has Amazon Prime? Do you only get something when we buy something on your list, or can we buy anything?" Okay, so it's it works the same no matter if you're a Prime member or not, um, and if you click through there, anything you buy through Amazon after you've clicked over to my store, I get a percentage of. So even if you don't buy anything there, if you buy or if you buy a mixture of things, um, and they have, you know, this is kind of the nitty gritty details that a lot of people probably don't care about, but um, it depends on the item. So some items are different, uh, but you know, just in general, that's a good way to help out. And you can um, buy for that session. Yeah, that not session, forever. right? Not forever for the rest of eternity. Um, so I think that's a pretty cool thing. Uh, Butterfly Planner says, hello, hello. I'm glad you're here. Um, okay, Brussels sprouts. So 
Brussels sprouts are not Jason's favorite thing, but they are one of my favorite things. So this is a good thing to keep in mind if you're cooking for more than just yourself. So whether you have roommates or significant other or kids or all of those, um, you know, keeping everyone in the family in mind. So we're not catering to one person, but we are also not ignoring what everyone likes. So like for this dinner, I want Brussels sprouts. Jason doesn't mind them, but they're also not his favorite thing, and I know that. So I'm also gonna do some mushrooms because he really likes those, and those aren't really my favorite thing. So we'll each have some of both, but I'm gonna go way heavier on the Brussels sprouts probably, and he's gonna go way heavier on the mushrooms because that's what our preference is. So that's just something, you know, when you're feeding a bunch of people, um, it's not about being shorter to cook or making everyone different meals, or that no one ever has like something served to them that isn't their favorite thing, but just that you have those options for people. So Brussels sprouts, basically the little cabbages. These are actually kind of giant Brussels sprouts, um, but they looked really good at the store because sometimes they look not so hot, so I was glad that they looked good this week. Um, so we are gonna cut these up too, similar to the mushrooms. So I'm gonna turn y'all facing towards the cutting board again. Um, let me get the Brussels sprouts out on the cutting board first, actually. And I rinsed these beforehand, so they're a little bit wet, but they've been sitting in the uh, colander for a little bit, so. We'll get these on the cutting board, and I'm worried that I might have gotten too much. Um, if they don't all fit on the pan, then we'll just have to roast the rest later because they are kind of gigantic, so it's a little misleading. Um, okay, I'm gonna face you. Might just have to throw them out. What? Well, might just have to throw them <laughs> out? No. <laughs> okay, let's uh, get y'all facing the cutting board again. Ugh. Okay, I think that's pretty straight on. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. Nita says, Brussels sprouts are my favorite veg, but not boiled. That's the worst way to make them. I agree. Boiling, for most things, isn't the most delicious way to prepare them. But we are going to do some boiling today, and we'll talk about that in a second. So, Brussels sprouts. Um, what I'm going to do with these is I'm just going to trim off the end here, like that. Probably a little bit more than that. And then I'm going to cut them in half. And so then when we put them on the cutting board, this kind of foot part will sit down and it'll get nice and crispy and delicious. On the cut, did I say cutting board? Baking sheet is what I meant if I say cutting board. So we're just gonna do that with all of them. So cut off the end, cut them in half. So, you know, there's quite a few of them here, so it takes a little bit of time, but it's pretty easy, um, you know, simple thing to do. And personally, I think roasting Brussels sprouts, but almost every vegetable, is one of the best ways to do it. It's just so flavorful. I mean, if you've watched a few of these live cook with me's, you see that we end up roasting something almost every time, <laughs> whether it's potatoes or vegetable or whatever, because it's just such a yummy way to cook stuff. And it's easy. Oh, that's the oven preheated. Um, it's easy because you just put everything on the pan and put it in the oven, and then you don't have to sit there and babysit it the way you might have to do something if you're cooking it on the stove top or doing some other method. Okay, so we're just rolling our way through these. And sometimes little leaves will fall off, that's fine. You just keep those in the mix with everything. And we'll get through these. Um, Butterfly Planner says, I like to steam them halfway and then roast them. That's interesting, I've never done that. Um, why do you like to do that? Like, how do, you, how do you think that's different, I guess, than just roasting them straight up? Do you like the texture better or the flavor better? I mean, generally, I try to do things with as little steps as possible, so <laughs> that probably wouldn't be something I would do, but I always like to hear y'all how y'all cook your food and what kinds of things you make because we all kind of have our own little routines, and I get inspiration from y'all and what you're doing um, just as much as I hope you get inspiration from me and what I'm doing. Um, Butterfly Planner says it makes them softer. Okay, I guess that makes sense. You're kind of pre-cooking them a little bit and then finishing them off with the roasting. Neat. Okay, we are almost done with the Brussels. I think y'all kind of get the idea of that. Um, and Brussels sprouts are definitely a vegetable that I feel like has kind of had a bad rap because everyone just had them boiled and was like, or that's not delicious. Um, but now that more people are roasting, I feel like they've kind of become kind of a trendy vegetable, which, you know, good for the Brussels sprout. They're moving up in the world. Okay, we've got all the Brussels sprouts cut up. Now we're gonna go on another ride, so hold on tight. Okay, there we go. That's pretty good. Okay, so now, actually I'm gonna turn you this way again, and we are 
so that you can actually see what's going on. There we go. So now we are gonna put the Brussels sprouts on that back baking sheet behind the mushrooms. So there's some of those. And we will see if, oh, that one didn't get cut. We will see how they do as far as fitting on the pan or not fitting on the pan. Um, Anita says, I like to cut them, just went away, let me grab the tablet. I like to cut them the way you are cutting them and then put salt, pepper, oregano, paprika, thyme, rosemary, and olive oil to roast them. Sometimes I make them with honey instead, roast them like that. All of that sounds divine. I love it. How fun. Another thing that can be good is like balsamic vinegar, kind of kind of similar, I guess, to the honey gives it that little sweet syrupy kind of thing. All right, we're gonna be a little close, but it's I think a lot of Brussels sprouts. we can fit them all in the pan. Yeah, I might have gone a little overboard. Jason says that's a lot of Brussels sprouts if you didn't hear him, but I'm sure you did because it seems like the audio picks up pretty well on these live streaming from my phone. Okay, so we've got everybody in their respective pans, and now it's time for us to season these up. Now. Nita just gave us a bunch of suggestions of things that you could do, so feel free to do any of those if you make this at home. Um, I'll show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put on, well first let's talk about the oven. So the oven is preheated to 425. You could also do 400 anywhere around there works. Now we're going to put on some sort of fat. I'm using olive oil. This is Cassandrino's olive oil. I really like their stuff. This is also linked to my Amazon store if you want to check it out. I actually need to order some because this is all I have left. And that's a problem. So. I need to get on that, but I'm going to drizzle a little bit of this on. All right, a little bit on the Brussels, a little bit on the mushrooms. Okay, so oil's on there. We're also going to do some garlic powder, and I put garlic powder on almost everything, because <laughs> or garlic, because garlic always makes stuff taste better. So a little bit of garlic powder, and then we're also going to put on some salt and if you've watched a few of these you know I don't really measure anything I just kind of eyeball it that's one of the beautiful things about cooking is you don't really have to measure stuff as opposed to baking where everything has to be very precise or it's not going to work out okay that's probably enough salt so you can do this as simple or as complicated as you want. You could just do the oil and the salt um, you can add in the garlic powder you can add other herbs and spices and things um, you know, it's just kind of whatever you have or what you're feeling like or what you feel like doing. Okay, so now that we've got all that done, we are going to toss these just to get everything coated and the spices and the salt and get the oil moved around the pan. And then I'm going to try to spread things out pretty evenly because, again, we don't want stuff like super piled up on each other. We want it to have a little room of its own so that it can caramelize. And with the mushrooms, I'm trying to make sure that one of the flat cut edges is facing down so that that gets nice and caramelized on the bottom. All right, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to rotate these just so I don't have to reach over all weird. And we're gonna do the same with the Brussels sprouts. A lot of people like bacon with their Brussels sprouts too. So that's something you could do is like, have a couple strips of bacon that you cook up and uh, put on at the end. Um, just another option to add in there. Okay, so same thing with the Brussels sprouts. We want the flat side facing down so that that gets nice and caramelized and delicious. And then these leaves that are kind of loose, we just leave those in there. They're fine and they'll be kind of like little mini kale chips almost. They'll just roast up in there. Now this is a little overcrowded I'm not gonna lie, but I think it will be acceptable. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my hands real quick. I'll be right back and then we will get these in the oven and we'll move on to the next thing on our list. Okay. So I'm gonna put these in for about 30 minutes. That's generally, whoo, that's, that's hot. That's generally how long they take to cook. So that'll be good. I'm gonna set the timer for that. Okay, that's done. Now I'm gonna turn on this water because the next thing we are going to do 
is work on the starch for this meal. So veggies are done, they're cooking there in the oven. Now we're gonna start working on the starch and I'm gonna look at the comments because I think I missed a couple things. Um, Oh, Nita says when I was a kid I used to call them pod people because they reminded me of the pod in the Invasion of the Body Snatchers movie. <laughs> um, the 1978 version, I don't go back to the original in the 50s. That's funny. I've never seen that movie, but I like that. That's, that's a good story. Okay, so I'm going to get these little Brussels sprout bits off my cutting board. And so we are going to move on to the starch. So the starch for tonight is potatoes. And... A lot of times on these live streams and just in life in general, I roast my potatoes because again, we've already discussed how much I love roasting, but tonight we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna make mashed potatoes because that's delicious and not something I do as often, but something that I definitely enjoy. So I've got a pot of water on the stove. I've just heated that up. So hopefully that can heat up while we are cutting our potatoes. So we've got our potatoes here. I am just gonna cut these into little cubes, even pieces. Um, so I'm gonna keep you all facing me for a little while, just so you don't have to get motion sick. But I'm just gonna cut them in half. And then, you know, again, same with the roasting, is we just want even pieces so that they cook at the same rate. And I'm sure many of you have made mashed potatoes before, so you're probably pretty familiar with this and how it works. Um, and I actually have red potatoes today because where I normally go grocery shopping, the russet potatoes are the cheapest. And so I just always get those because they're the cheapest. But I went somewhere else and the red potatoes were actually cheaper. And I think a red skin potato and a little mashed potato is beautiful. So that's what we're doing. Um, Oh, Butterfly Planner says that she's having garlic mashed potatoes tonight. And Nita says roasting is also an easy way to make vegetables during the week when you get home from work. Yes, if you need to do meal prep, get a few sheet pans of veggies going. You can just do other stuff and let that happen. And then you can have them in your fridge. Um, great tip, Nita. And Nita also says, Butterfly Planner, you rock. I love garlic mashed potatoes. And Nita says that she's having a BLT with curly spicy fries. That sounds delicious. Um... Now, when it comes to the potatoes, some of you might be thinking, you didn't peel those? Because a lot of people do peel their potatoes. But the skins, well, if we want to, you know, do the dietitian route, the skins have nutrients that you lose when you peel them, yada, yada, yada. But they also look pretty, I think, in the mashed potatoes, just to break it up with that color. And also, it's one less thing we have to do. <laughs> and I'm all about not spending more time than we have to spend unless, you know, we want to making our food. So peeling is just an extra step that is not necessary. I don't think it makes them any better. Nutritionally, it doesn't help them at all. And it takes more work, so why do it? To me, those all sound like negatives, so I'm not going to. But of course, if you really want to peel your potatoes and you don't mind taking that time, then feel free You know, to each their own. So I've almost got all of these potatoes cut up. And then we will move on to the next thing. And, oh, Butterfly Planner is making, is making bangers and mash for dinner. Um, and says, I haven't peeled potatoes in over a decade. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I'm just not into it. And I, I remember when I was little, like, my mom peeling potatoes for mashed potatoes and stuff. But once I started cooking, I was like, we don't need to do that. I don't feel like doing that. So we're not going to. The only time I really use the vegetable peeler anymore is like if I have like a butternut squash or an acorn squash. Um, that's probably about it. Okay, so all my potatoes are cut up, so now I've got all these nice little cubes. So that's good, and I haven't cut my finger off yet on one of these live streams, so that's also good. Though, I do have to show y'all, because we always talk about this during the live streams, is when is it gonna happen when I cut myself on camera, and it's like a whole big thing. Um, so this, I don't know how well you can see it. This fingernail that goes off like to the side. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was cutting something and I cut right down on my finger. It cut my nail off. I didn't hurt my fi my finger at all, like the actual skin, I didn't bleed. But I just cut that nail right off kind of at a crooked angle and it was so low that I couldn't really cut it down. So I just kind of like tried to make it smooth so it wasn't jagged. It's almost grown back to the point where I can cut the rest of the nail down now. Um, but I was so disappointed because look how long my nails were. And they were all even length. And I was like, oh, I should paint them. They look great. And then this happened. So once this grows back in, I'll probably cut them all back to match. 
and then I can give them a little paint job. But right now, I, I do not want to paint it like that because I think it's going to look, it's going to look wild. Okay, so the water is still heating, so we'll wait for that. And I saw a few comments came in. Oh, Bill Thomas says, from Laura, you're eating so early. Uh, I am eating kind of early for me. This is something that y'all should know. Some of you know this, but dinner around here is usually pretty late <laughs> because that's just how I roll. Um, it's something I'm trying to work on. So it's, you know, a self-improvement thing, um, but it's always kind of how I've been. Um, and so these, when we do these live streams, this is like dinner is early because I got to do this, you know, at a reasonable time for y'all. And also, um, so, you know, we have time for the live stream to happen and all of that. So yeah, but I'm trying to improve because I'd like to get dinner on the table a little bit earlier. I'm just not there yet. I'm also famous for not reading the recipe and then being like, oh, this has to sit for an hour. <laughs> like, hmm, okay, I guess we have to wait an hour, which I've gotten better about that, but uh, Nita says, what do you consider a late dinner? I mean, I consider 8.30 and later, late, maybe 8 and later. Usually around here we have dinner between 7.30 and 9, I would say, which is not what I want. I'd like to have it more at like 6.37 would probably be better, which is what kind of happens when I do these live streams. Okay, so I thought by turning the water on I would get it going a little bit sooner but we're just gonna kind of wait for that to do its thing and then once it starts boiling we can throw the potatoes in um oh I have a few more comments from you Nita says some people think if you spend a lot of time cooking it's better but it's about the time you spend with your family if you have family or like me in front of my tablet looking at Star Trek um, yeah I mean that's a good point it's just all about what you want to do if like you love taking extra time to cook which sometimes I do then that's great um, but also you know you don't have to spend your whole life cooking to make food that tastes good and whatever. Um, and there are other things in life that are important too. Spot on. Nita also says they sell a glove that prevents you from cutting your fingers um, that you might want to look into that. <laughs> uh, yeah, we. I actually, they had those when I worked in um, catering in college. If we had to cut lemons or stuff, we didn't do most of the cooking, but like sometimes we'd have to cut lemons or something. Um, and they had a little glove so we didn't cut ourselves. Um, Butterfly Planner says that really is late. My other friend is like that. Yeah, I try not to be, but I'm, I'm not there yet. Okay, so while the water finishes up heating up for these potatoes, I'm just going to set this cutting board to the side, and we're going to go on to the next thing. And the next thing is the protein part of our meal. And tonight, I'm going to go around and get it. I'll be right back. Tonight, that is da -da -da, pork chops. So these are from, I'll hold them up while I talk about them. These are from our uh, half a hog share that we bought last February. So over a year ago, these are the last pork chops that we have from that. Um, there's still a few things down there. So a little bit of sausage. We have lots of bacon because I have, ooh, there's blood dripping off. Let me put this down. Uh, we have lots of bacon because I have not, let me get a rag for that. I have not been cooking that at a reasonable rate. You know, I try to kind of make it last everything lasts at the same time, but that is not something that I've done. Um, Nita asks, are those boneless pork chops? They are not, they do have a bone on them, but I think they're at the end of the section where they were cutting them. So they don't have as much bone as some of the other ones that we've had. Um, but yeah, they're from our half a hog share. So uh, the thing with that, I think a lot of people are like, oh, well, like how long does that last or whatever a half a hog for me and Jason lasts longer than a year now of course we don't just eat pork um, we have vegetarian dinners we have vegan dinners we have dinners where we use chicken or beef or various forms of seafood or whatever um, but you know with all of that variety and mixture and everything this half a hog has lasted longer than a year for us and then we got to use up the rest of the bits and then I'll probably get another one um, whenever that's done Ooh. Our water's almost boiling for the potatoes. That's good. All right, I'm going to go through a few more of your comments, and then depending on what the water's doing or whatever, or the pork chops, then we'll get into that stuff. Um, oh, Evie's number one says, yes, love seeing you live. I often miss you because of the time difference. I'm glad you're able to make it. Where are you watching from? Because that is something else I'd like to know. I know I have some people in Australia, um, you know, people in the UK. I mean, I have people all over the world. But for these dinner ones, I know a lot of y'all miss out live because of the time. Um, 
so maybe I need to start doing live streams at different times. It's just hard to figure that out because I don't know how many people are different places or want to see live streams and also, you know, I have my life and my schedule, but I'd like to mix it up a little bit. Um, Evie's number one says that she's from the Netherlands. It's 11.38. Is that what that says? Yes, 11.38 there. That's late, but you know, if you're gonna stay up late, why not hang out with me while I'm making dinner in Virginia? Um, so thanks for coming, that's awesome. I'm glad you're able to see at least a little bit before you go to sleep. Okay, our water's almost boiling. Let's go ahead, oh, Butterfly Planner says you should do a breakfast and lunch live stream. That's interesting. I don't do, my breakfast usually isn't that fancy, but maybe we could even just do live streams on other topics at different times, if y'all would like that. Um, Raya Sen says, I'm located in the UK. It's 10.38 p.m. here now. Okay, so you're also a little bit late, because y'all are about, yeah, five hours ahead, so that makes sense. Come on, water, boil. I feel like we're in this little lull, but I don't want to start working on the pork chops and the water's gonna start boiling and then I'm freaking out and y'all get to see me look a mess. <laughs> Maybe I should do that, would that be more entertaining? Um, oh, we're starting to get some bubbles. Okay, I'm gonna call that boiling. And I'm spilling water on the burner. Okay, so I am going to get these potatoes in the pot. Let's do a little turnaround. Nita says that would be nice, maybe a live stream breakfast, lunch, on the weekend when you have time to make something up big. Oh, that's a fun idea. Maybe we could do that. We'll have to try try some different stuff. Okay, so potatoes are going in the pot. I'm gonna try not to splash boiling water on myself. We'll see how I do. And um, this is about two and a half pounds of potatoes. It was a five pound bag and I did half of it. So this should be plenty for Jason and myself to have some today and then have leftovers tomorrow. This is, I'm gonna tell you, dropping potatoes in a pot of boiling water on a live video, not the best decision I've ever made. It's not my favorite thing, but I'm doing it for you. <laughs> I'm making the sacrifice so y'all can see me make mashed potatoes um, because I'm definitely burning myself a lot right now, but I probably should have put the potatoes in before it started boiling. That might've been smart. I don't know. Whatever, we're almost there. Last one's going in. Okay. Those are doing their thing. We're gonna let those boil. I'm gonna put, here's, here's a tip. Um, I'm gonna put a wooden spoon on the top. That helps with boiling over because it, it kind of breaks the surface tension, I guess is why that works. It's still probably gonna boil over. I'm just gonna give you a heads up because that always seems to happen whenever I make um, mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna wipe up a little bit of this water that's on here. Try not to catch my thing on fire. My, uh, what is it called? Dish rag, dish cloth, dish towel. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way and then we'll start working on our pork chops. And I've got a few comments from some of you as well. So I will see what those are. Okay, let's see. Oh, Evie's number one says we could do a pancake live stream. That would be fun. Um, Butterfly Planner says, do the kitties like to help cook? It depends. Sometimes they're in here a lot. Um, and it depends on what I'm doing. Luna really likes leafy green vegetables. She also loves carrots. So I don't know why, like if you have carrots out or you use a cutting board for carrots, she's like trying to get on there. She's like hugging the bag, rolling around, rubbing her face all over. She's obsessed with carrots. So she always likes those, but they don't bother me too much. They don't really try to eat stuff. I don't have any problems with that. Um, Evie's number one says, thanks for stuff suffering for the video. You're welcome. <laughs> um, Nita says, any tips to help protect the veggies from going bad for those who buy in bulk? or you have a garden that produces as much as yours does. Evie says that she freezes a lot of stuff and she just buys it when it's on sale. And Butterfly Planner says that she preps and freezes as well. Um, so yeah, freezing is a great way to do stuff. Obviously not everything freezes well, um, but even if you cook stuff in batches and then freeze those to heat up for leftovers, that's probably the best way. You can obviously get into canning and drying and that kind of stuff, which can be fun. And I do do some of that with garden stuff, but I would say the easiest is freezing that's really really the best one um just because it doesn't take a lot of specialty equipment and or specialty skill and then you can just kind of pull things out when you need it and it's pretty convenient other than time it's not or not time space you might not always have the space for it um nita says my cat passed away that passed away loved olive oil butter you could leave food out and he wouldn't touch it 
but if it was butter, then it was like a drug. Um, yeah, I've had some cats that really like oil or butter or that kind of thing. Anita also says, how long does the, do the veggies last frozen? <sighs> I mean, there's probably a like official answer, like a year or something. I would say until it doesn't look good anymore. I would Google it. That's the best thing. Or sometimes freezers will have a little chart in there, but I would say anything you want to do, Google it, and you could probably find a more official answer than me just making it up right now. So that's what I'm gonna say before I tell you something wrong. Okay, so we're getting the potatoes going. Now we're gonna do the pork chops. So I'm gonna put, we probably don't need to put any fat on the pan because both of these pork chops have a pretty thick fat band that we are gonna melt down in the pan right away and then that will provide the fat for cooking everything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this pan on and let me grab a couple tongs. And now we are just going to season the pork chops. So again, the pork chops are right here. I'm just gonna do a little bit of salt and pepper and garlic powder. Um, maybe I'll do the salt last because I actually touched that with my fingers. Um, Evie's number one says, Jory, you might remember, that's your cat, right? Um, loves drinking water um, where you heat canned hot dogs in. Oh, so like the cooking water? That's, I mean, I guess that makes sense. It probably, probably thinks it tastes really, really good. <laughs> Okay, so pork chops. We're gonna season those. Let's do the pepper first, like I said, just because that makes sense. So I just got a pepper grinder, just black pepper. I'm just gonna put some of that on top. And these pork chops, I mean, I just do them really simply. I don't marinate them or do anything like that because they have a plenty of great flavor already on their own. So we're gonna do that. And then I'm just got my garlic powder here. So we put garlic powder on the veggies, putting garlic powder on the pork chops. All right, that's pretty good. And then we are going to do a little bit of salt. And I'm sprinkling the salt from a height. That's just a good way to get a nice even distribution of your salt so it's not kind of like in, in one spot more than the other. Because as it falls, it kind of separates. And I always find that I need more salt than what I normally do with cuts of meat like this, just because you have to account for the like the thickness that, you know, you're just seasoning the outside. I usually do fine with like ground meats, but I'm gonna add a little extra than I think because I generally don't do enough. Okay, so we've got those seasoned. The pan is starting to heat up. The potatoes are boiling. We are rocking and rolling, y'all. So I've just seasoned one side of the pork chop right now. So the side that's facing up, I've got, you know, all my stuff on there. And then what I'm gonna do when we put it in the pan, um, I'll put that side down first and then I'll season the other side in the pan. Um, Nita says, what are the health benefits of pink salt? Okay, good question. So pink salt, as well as, you know, some of the different sea salts and things you can find. Um, they have a little bit more of like other trace minerals in there, which is a nice bonus. With that said, if you're looking to try to make some changes in what you're eating um, to, you know, improve what you're doing or try to eat healthier or whatever, salt is not the place where you need to start. This like switching from one salt to another is minuscule if any effect. Um, you know, I'd much rather, because this stuff can be a lot more expensive than just kind of your regular table salt. Um, so especially if you're on a budget and trying to figure out where, what to do stuff, this is the last thing I would do. You know, looking at buying more vegetables or, you know, other things that could have a much bigger impact and be much better bang for your buck and your effort. So that's the first thing on that. Um, also, maybe you prefer the flavor of one of these versus table salt. So that's another reason to use one of these other types of salt. And there was one other thing I was gonna say. Oh, the one thing with this kind of stuff is it's not fortified with iodine. So table salt in the US at least is, excuse me, I'm burping, is fortified with iodine, which is an essential nutrient that a lot of people don't get enough of, especially if you're not eating a lot of seafood or sea vegetables like seaweed, um, those sorts of things. And so back in the day, people would have low iodine, that affects your thyroid, thyroid becomes enlarged, you start to get a goiter. You may have seen pictures of a goiter, um, you know, in different magazines or different TV programs, but that can happen if you're not getting enough iodine. So that's why all of our salt is fortified um, to help prevent that. But I'm just making sure these potatoes aren't boiling over too much. But, um, you know, if you're not getting your iodine from your salt, it is something to be aware of. Make sure you're getting a variety of food 
you know, other sources of iodine. It's not something to stress out about, but just something to keep in mind. Okay. This pan is starting to get pretty hot. I think we can start putting stuff in. Um, kind of Vegan says, Salt Bay, look it up. I don't know what that is, but... Maybe it's interesting. I'm not sure. Um, Evie's number one says, I heard people love smoked salt on homemade fries and such. Yeah, you can get a lot of different kinds of flavored salts too, right? So the smoked salts, lemon salt, I don't know. There's other kinds of things. Um, so that's another thing to look for if you want to get, you know, some different blends to add more flavor to your food when you're using your salt. Okay, so we are going to get these pork chops in the pan. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. You can hear the potatoes probably boiling over a little bit. I'm going to turn them down just a little bit and we'll check those later. So now we're going to put our pork chops in. So what I'm going to do is I've got my tongs here and one at a time you can see that each of these pork chops has a pretty big fat rim on it. And this is a trick I learned semi recently. Um, we are going to put this fat side down in the pan and so some of that will melt off into the pan and then I'll provide the fat for the rest of the stuff that we're doing. So just gonna kind of hold it like this, and you can hear it sizzling. And we're just gonna stand here. <laughs> All this melts down a little bit. And so rendering down this fat is nice because um, you know you're using the fat that's on the meat to cook the food, so you don't end up with too much once it starts cooking and that starts to melt down, anyways. But also, you know, a lot. Of, I, at least I don't like to chew on a big hunk of fat like that, so it just kind of ends up getting left anyway. So if we can kind of melt that down a little bit and use it um, in our cooking instead, then I think that's a nice way to do it. Um, just saw a comment. Evie's number one says lemon salt goes um, lemon salt with fish. I can imagine that combo. Yeah, that would probably be pretty good. Um, and also says what's the amount of time you normally spend on cooking dinner? Probably about an hour, I would say. Um, I could go faster if I was trying to be be a little more speedy. Uh, but some nights it's less than that. Sometimes some nights it's more. Obviously, I would say that's probably about the average. Now, I'm someone who generally enjoys cooking. I know for some people, and also depending on what your schedule's like, maybe that's too much for you. Um, you know, but again, you can kind of make it fit to what you want to do and also that's where meal prep and stuff comes in so I don't do meal prep because I have time in the evenings to make dinner but if I maybe had a schedule where that wouldn't work like I got from home very late or something then I probably would do meal prep so prepping things on the weekend or just a day off you know getting a lot of stuff either fully cooked or at least chopped up and ready to go so that you can make dinner more quickly when the time comes and also I say I generally spend probably less time making dinner in the summer because we're doing a lot more fresh stuff so all the tomatoes and cucumbers and all that kind of stuff coming out of the garden um so that makes things a little bit quicker than in the winter where you're kind of doing like winter squash and you know things that maybe take a little bit more work to deal with okay i think that's should probably be melted a little bit more like i said this is a newer thing that i've started doing so I'm not necessarily an expert as far as melting this fat off the side, but I do think it's pretty good, pretty good way to do it. But it does require, you know, you to stand here and hold the pork chop like this for a little while, which is kind of annoying. And then once this is done, we'll also have to do the other one. So, but it does seem to be working. I mean, fat is melting off into the pan right now. So we're getting there. Um, do a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna call that done. And now I'm putting this the seasoned side down. Let me grab a pot holder. And this is my uh, cast iron pan. This is a smaller one. I think this is like maybe a 10 inch, I wanna say. Um, I just saw a comment come in. Evie says that's a pretty big pork chop. Yeah, it is. Um, and this is just two. We'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, too. Um, Nita says, do you think it's better to season your meat and then freeze until you're going to cook it or season it when you're about to cook it? I would think when you're about to cook it, just because, like, seasoning and freezing, it's not really going to do anything flavor-wise. Um, so I would just wait, and then you'll have more options, because, like, if you season it first, then you're kind of stuck with whatever you did, 
when you go to clip it. But if you don't, then you have way more options for what to do. Unless you want to do stuff that's like a super meal prep where you like kind of have, you know, some of those meal prep slow cooker bags where people put all the ingredients in together, then obviously that's a little bit different. But. Um, okay, Evie number one says, I normally spend half an hour cooking. Honestly, I have no clue how long roasting vegetable is. I boil, I often make rice and noodle dishes. Yeah, so roasting vegetable takes about half an hour and then you have to cut it up. So, but you know, while it's cooking, you don't have to do anything. So if you got that going, then while they were cooking, you could cook the rest of the things for your meal. I hope y'all can hear me okay, because this is really loud right now. <laughs> um, so yeah. I think I saw. Oh, Evie says, Nita, if you know what you're going to make, freeze it, season, save time. Yeah, if you if you have something in mind and you want to label it as such, I think that can definitely be quicker. So it kind of kind of just depends on what your priorities are, I guess. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Let's see. Just, you know, melting the fat off a pork chop as you do. Just put it in the toaster. Just put it in the toaster. There you go. Yeah. We're done in a minute. <laughs> it does smell really good in here, though, I have to tell you that. Okay. We're going to stop because I just don't feel like doing this anymore. Done. We're calling that done. Okay. Pork chops are in the pan now. Now we are going to season the side that's baking up. So, again... A little bit of pepper, that on there, and then, oh good, y'all are saying you can hear me, so that's good. Oh, Evie's going, um, getting hungry, time for bed. Oh, and Evie says, say hi to Jason and the kitties for me. Jason is- Hi, hi there you go. So, he I'll, says I'll say hi to the kitties for you. Yeah. <laughs> On there, and then salt. And then our pork chops will be seasoned, and then it's just the waiting game of them getting cooked. Which hopefully won't take too long. They're pretty thick, but what I am gonna do is knock things out of the cabinet really loud. Um, I'm gonna get the splatter screen, and we're gonna put that on top. So that's gonna help with some of the splattering of the fat and stuff, so it doesn't make my stove top too gross. And also, that also traps, even though it's like a mesh, it still traps some heat in there. And so I find that it helps things cook a little bit faster as well. And I'm also gonna turn my cast iron down. Um, sorry, I'm just putting the stuff in the cabinet that fell out. Uh, I'm gonna turn the cast iron down because cast iron does hold heat. And so you want to, um, you know, keep that in mind because you don't wanna burn the stuff that you're cooking. So now I'm gonna put this back up here um, I saw a comment just popped up from Kind of Vegan. Can you really get uh, trichinosis these days? So if you're not familiar, trichinosis is a pathogen that can be in pork sometimes. And, you know, with all kinds of meats, you're supposed to cook them at certain temperatures to kill pathogens. For pork, the big one is trichinosis. Now, as far as rates of trichinosis in pork meat, I don't know a statistic on that. But I just know that it's a thing that can happen, you know? Same thing, I guess, kind of like with salmonella on chicken. I don't know what the rate is of chickens having salmonella on them, but, you know, you just kind of assume that it does and cook it to that temperature. It's probably fine, but, you know, you don't want to get sick. So, um, you know, you want your pork to be cooked and not raw, basically, is what that means. And you can use a meat thermometer. I have used a meat thermometer in the past for these types of things, but honestly, they kept breaking. So if you don't feel like you have a good grip on how to cook certain things, then I would say a meat thermometer is good. Really, I should probably be using one too. Um, but mm, I have some dietitian. Yeah, do as I say, uh, not as I do, y'all. I'm not setting a great example. But they kept breaking, and it's so annoying when you keep buying meat thermometers yeah. and then you go to use it and it starts doing all this weird stuff. You're like, well, I know that's not the temperature. Um, I don't know why they're just like, no matter what kind you get, they have some sort of downside. And when the last one broke, I just never replaced it. So that's. That's the real life of it. Um, and I like that one too, because it was the one that had the meat, like the thermometer part and a cord, 
and then the display, which is really nice, because you could put it, like if I was roasting a chicken in the oven, you could just put it in the thigh of the chicken and close the oven door on it, totally fine, and then you have the, re the you know, display outside the oven, you could set an alarm on it, so then it would just beep when the chicken reached the right temperature. It was amazing until it stopped working. Okay, that's a timer saying that our, um, our roasted veggies are done, so we're gonna check on those. Oh yeah, they look quite done. So I'm gonna turn the oven off. I'm gonna leave it open so they can vent because I don't want them to get too cool before everything else is finished. Jason, can you grab me a fork real quick? Yeah, should I open a window? Yeah, we're also getting a little smoky in here, y'all. So we get warm. if the smoke smoke detector goes off. I'd be surprised they have not I know, because usually you all know it's you know, with smoke detectors, they go off when nothing is happening. It's like, oh, there was some steam, and then, you know, it's, but, you know, I guess it's better that than them not work yeah, when they're supposed to. Yeah. Um, um, oh, Nita says I'm an awesome example, and tell the cute boy to back off her girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, even though I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt, because Nita's a Star Trek fan. Oh, um, uh, yeah. Pity Dallas asked if I watch Doctor Who. I do not. I know it's a popular show, but it is not one I've gotten yeah, into. Not one of us have ever watched. Yeah. I haven't watched a single episode. Yeah. Kind of I'm not familiar with it at all, other than it's a thing that people like. Yeah. Um, but I feel like there's so much great TV. We have such a long list of stuff. Yeah, and Doctor and Who has been on for how many? 11, 12, Yeah, there's 15, no way. <laughs> there's no way that we're going to get there. Um, kind of Vegan said old fashioned meat thermometers don't break, right? I don't know. I mean, again, the I've had all types, and they always seem to have one thing or another go wrong. But yeah, having the electric component probably makes it more likely to have issues. And kind of vegan also says if my smoke detector goes off, the whole building gets evacuated. Okay, Ooh, well yeah. we're lucky that we're not in that situation because yeah. our neighbors would not be very happy with us. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm trying to get a potato and see if they're done cooking. I just keep stabbing at water. Um, oh, they are done. Okay. So we'll turn that off and we will strain those in a second. Um, oh, kind of vegan says that the expanse is great. That sounds familiar. Oh, yeah. I haven't wanted to watch that. Oh, yeah. While. You've heard um, good things. I've seen stuff on our Seneca, though. Side, yeah. That's a sci fi one in the second season, I believe. Oh, okay. I thought it was really cool. Hmm. Yeah, it's another one I like a lot. Um, Add it to the list. Wait one second. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I was, and then I stopped. Um, side note on the meat stuff. So I didn't mention this earlier, but if you cook with meat, you need to have a separate cutting board for raw meat. Okay, so what we were talking about earlier about foodborne illness and that sort of thing, separate cutting board. Nothing that's not raw meat touches this. This is just for raw meat. Once the meat is cooked, it does not go on this cutting board because it's not raw meat anymore. Um, it's just another precaution because, you know, you don't want to get yourself sick with, you know, cutting up a raw tomato on here and then you got God knows what, so. Especially with wood cutting boards, yeah? Yeah, especially with wood cutting boards because they absorb things. Uh, but, you know, no matter what type of cutting board you're using, you still want to do that. Nita says that The Expanse is a must-watch. Oh, yeah. It, it seems really cool. I'm like, look, like there's, not, there's not enough good sci-fi shows. I mean, Westworld's coming back, but... Westworld, I'm so excited. If y'all haven't watched now, I'm going to be the person telling people to watch those. Westworld, it's on HBO, so you got to pay for HBO. But Westworld, season two, so it's early. You can still get in and get caught up. So good. One of my top favorite shows, when the last season ended, I was so devastated because I just want to watch Westworld <laughs> all the time. Um, Nita also likes Westworld. Yeah, it's so good. Okay, so I need to... Jason, would you want to strain the potatoes off camera for me? Not particularly. Does that be done right now? Yes. I mean, you okay. can finish washing what you're washing, but Wait, you can have... Is that water? Yeah. I have bare skin. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, fix. Um, Butterfly Planner says... I use the same board for everything, meat after veg meat after veggies, of course. I wash my wood boards with hot soap and water. I've never gotten sick. Well, I'm glad you've never gotten sick. And it's probably one of those things that, like, I don't know what the statistical yeah, risk is. Yeah, 90% of the population is. never would. <laughs> right, but the dietician in me says have separate cutting boards. <laughs> Doesn't use thermometers, but, oh, you're right. I almost burned my hand. 
That has never conducted heat like that. We're talking about hot. Oh, the, oh yeah. The, the, I touched the thing. I guess I don't normally leave on that long, so there's going to be a burn. I've there. grabbed them before and I've done it. And, Yikes. Yeah. Oh, you're right? Yeah, at least I didn't scream any expletives on the live stream. Mm -hmm. um, let's, <laughs> let's check this. Oh, that's getting nice and brown. Flip. And flip. Down Woo! That was that was quite an ouch, but you know, I'm fine. It's just gonna be a little red. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is so loud. We're gonna turn this way and talk. <gasps> well that stuff finishes cooking. Um okay, so Can you the potatoes? Yes, could if you could strain the potatoes, that would be good. Uh you could put them in the colander if you wanted. What's that alternative? So hold the lid and let it Normally what I do, but I'm also I'm the woman who cut her fingernail off the other day. So here, yeah, you said it's already out, and then just drain them off and then put them back in the pot. Would be great. Oh yeah. Thank you. Okay, so kind of vegan asked, how are the seedlings doing? So if you don't know, we've got all kinds of plants started for the garden. They're doing great. Um, I posted on my Instagram. If you don't follow me there, there's a link below the video. It's Sarah Moran Nutrition. Just search that and you'll find it. Um, but I posted on my Instagram. The mite is probably gone now. I'll, I'll do another update. But it's uh, I posted on my Instagram stories that the peppers came up the other day. So we have not everything. There's still some stragglers that haven't come up yet. But everything's starting. The tomatoes are starting to come up. So it's really good. So I turned on the grow lights a couple days ago. And things are starting to happen. I'm still waiting on some others. And then I need to start getting stuff started in the garden. And there's still some things I need to start under the grow lights too. But so far so good. And I actually ordered more tomato seeds today because I have a tomato problem. I just love them. So that's what we're doing. Wait, what am I doing with these ones? Uh, put them back in the pot. Let me, we're gonna put the pot right here. And then just put the potatoes back in there. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Nathaniel says, I made it. I didn't think I would get off work in time. I'm glad you're here. Whoa, we're getting the steam from the potatoes. Oh, yeah. That's quite the effect. Might go over. Uh, that over. Let's hope we don't overheat my phone. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so we've got the potatoes in here. Um, so let me get everyone. Let's do... Whew, that's a lot of steam. I'm going to put the lid on these. Let me get everyone kind of... Let's do a summary of where we are at. We have roasted... Mushrooms and Brussels sprouts in the oven, they're done, but I'm just kind of letting them chill in there with the door open so they can stay pretty warm. We've got some pork chops and a cast iron skillet. That's what's really loud right now. And then we just boiled some potatoes and we are gonna mash these up. So, what do I need? Um, I need a masher. I did not get that out, so if you could grab that for me. And also I need milk. What? Oh. I'm not just While you're here. Over here. While you're know. here. <laughs> Trying to watch this. Special, I mean, I would do it. Special but... meat board. What's it called? Cutting board. Cutting board. <laughs> um, so, we're going to do the mashed potatoes. Now, um, I left the skin on the mashed potatoes, as you'll remember from earlier. And the potato masher is over there. I didn't even that. Thanks. Um, and then we're just going to season these up and get them all mashed together and I'm going to show you what I like to put in my mashed potatoes. So first off is I like to use a potato masher. My mom always used an electric beater if you want like super fluffy creamy mashed potatoes that's great. I like the mash like hand mashed because you get a little like chunks and texture in there. I don't know I think that's nice. Um, and this is also easier to clean. Um, Butterfly Planner says that Jason is a reluctant sous chef. <laughs> yeah, well, it's one of those things like if Jason wasn't here, I would just do it. And even if he was and I wasn't doing a live stream, I would just do it. But, you know, if I can reduce... Not that he has his own plans or life or... Uh... <laughs> I'm going to move y'all back a little bit. But, you know, if I have the option to not run around and say, wait one second, I'll be right back, then I'm going to do it. Um... Oh, Kind of Vegan says, just followed you on Instagram. You can see my garden, too. Awesome. Ooh. Yeah, definitely, as y'all, you know, with meals you make or 
um, garden stuff or whatever, definitely tag me in that stuff on Instagram, whether it's on your stories or in your feed or whatever, because I would love to see what y'all are cooking and if you're gardening, what stuff you're growing in your garden. Um, that would be really about, cool. Oh, what? About the galaxy tomato. Yes, I did share the oh. news about the galaxy tomato earlier, so everyone's up to date with that. So we've got the potatoes here, and if you missed that story, it's pretty long. So go back to the beginning. We talked about it pretty early on <laughs> if you came in late. But long story short, we ordered more tomato seeds. Um, I've got some butter here. So we're going to put in a little bit of that. That's probably enough. And again, I'm just eyeballing it. If it doesn't taste right, we can add more. Whatever. We'll see. We're also going to put in some milk. I'm going to just do a splash of that. And what normally ends up happening is I have to end up adding more milk later because I normally don't put enough in the beginning, but I'd rather add more as needed than like do too much and it get mushy because you can't go back from that. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so a little bit of salt. Put in a few pinches of that. And again, we can taste and see how it is later. Um, I'm going to put in some garlic powder. So we've got garlic powder and everything today because... Garlic is just good. It's just good. Uh, let's do some pepper too. So I'm gonna do a few grinds of pepper. And then we're gonna put in some dried rosemary. Fresh would be great, but we don't have it, so dried will have to do. And I think rosemary and potatoes is just like an amazing combination. So I'm just gonna crinkle some of that in there. And Jason is a big rosemary fan, so we gotta put that in there for him. And now I've got my potato masher and I'm just gonna mash. I also use this masher, ooh, that was loud. I also use this masher for um, making guacamole. So those are the only times I really use this thing, but that's enough for me to keep it in the kitchen. Um, so I'm just mashing these potatoes and I'll show you the finished product, but I'm not going to turn the camera down right now because the steam coming out of this thing, I think would overheat my phone and then the live stream would end and then y'all wouldn't get to see the finished product. So I'm just going to mash away and okay. So as you can see, we're getting a pretty good consistency, but it's still a little too thick. So I'm going to add in a little bit more milk to thin it out some. It's probably good. And then we will mash again. Um, Onita says that she likes texture in her mashed potatoes as well. Yeah, it's just a little more interesting. I also really like dipping things in mashed potatoes. Like the pork chop or chicken or the vegetables or Buffalo whatever. Mash. Buffalo mash. That Okay, so at JMU in one of the dining halls, they have this thing called buffalo mash. And it's like the favorite thing. It's like mashed potatoes with like, what does it have? Chicken fingers or something? Yeah, something like that. Uh, I think it's green onions on it. Is that right? Hot sauce. Yeah, it's like some sort of buffalo sauce. Some like sort of... A, a pico tomato oh, pepper yeah. type thing. On top. That's like a favorite. If you, if you go to JMU, it's like a favorite, favorite dining hall item. One of the most popular items on the menu. Okay. So when it's buffalo mash night, people are like lined up. Um, all right, so I just added a little bit more milk, and I think, I think that's a good texture. And the nice thing about these mashed potatoes is they hold heat really well. So, you know, once we're done, we'll just put the lid on, and then they can just kind of hang out until the pork chops are done. But I am going to taste it to make sure the seasoning is right, and try not to burn my tongue on camera. Hmm. I think it needs a little bit more salt, and then it'll be perfect. That's the thing about cooking shows, it's like, they make this stuff and it's like piping hot out of the oven. They're like, oh, we gotta take a bite real quick. Like they must be in a lot of pain. I feel like that's a skill for being on a cooking show, is you have to be able to eat like excruciatingly hot food on camera and just go, hmm, that's great. Maybe they have like frozen spoons and stuff. To oh, stuff. that would be a, a, little, a little production tip. I bet you're right. I mean, and if you have a recorded show, then obviously you have more flexibility. But if you're doing something live, that's that's rough. Okay, so potatoes, we're going to call done. I'm just going to pop the lid on those, keep the heat in. And I'll put the masher on a spoon rest. Okay, so potatoes are done. The veggies are done, and they're not 
and burnt, so we'll just keep those in there. I'm going to rinse my hand off. Now let's check out these pork chops. And I just grab that thing again with my hand. Maybe I cannot learn my... Rubber. I've never had that happen before, but I guess I haven't kept it on a pan long enough. Maybe I should do some rubber cutting on there. Yeah. Yeah. That's an idea. That has the stuff you can oh, dip in there. This still needs more time. Okay. Hey, if you had a meat thermometer, you know. <laughs> if I had a meat thermometer, I would know. Okay, so these are finishing up. While these are finishing up, I will show you everything else. So y'all can see what we're having. Um, we'll talk about the pork chops a little bit because they don't have to totally finish for y'all to know what's up. So let's look at the vegetables. I'll just pull these out for y'all. So the full meal that we're having tonight, we have the roasted mushrooms. These we did olive oil, salt, and garlic powder. Jason's favorite. And then my favorite, the roasted Brussels sprouts. And again, olive oil, salt, and garlic powder. And like I said, you can see the leaves got kind of like this super crispy, crunchy thing going on. And if I flip one of these Brussels sprouts over, see the foot got nice and caramelized and delicious. So those look beautiful. I'm very excited about those. Then we have our mashed potatoes, which I will show you after I take off the lid. So those are all mashed up and oh, the garlic, those smell really good. And then I'm gonna put my oven mitt on so I don't burn myself for the third time. We've got the pork chops. So they're still finishing up, but you know, there's the pork chop there. Now, someone mentioned earlier that those pork chops look pretty gigantic and they are. Um, when we get them from our farmer in, the, in our hog share, they, uh, the way their butcher does it is they have it packaged two to a package and then there's kind of giant pork chops. So what we will do is we will cut those in half. So that will make four portions for us, half a pork chop each, then the veggies and the mashed potatoes, and then we'll have the other half for lunch tomorrow. So this, is, this meal is enough for us to have dinner tonight, leftovers tomorrow, and maybe even a little leftover after that, um, especially with the Brussels sprouts and the mushrooms and that sort of thing. So that's the whole meal. That's how everything looks. I will just let the pork chops finish and we're going to eat here in a second. Let me go through any of your comments that I may have missed um, here at the end before I hop off. So I want to make sure I'm in talk. Make sure I reference those or answer your questions or whatever. Nita says, how do you balance what to cook if you're cooking and the other person doesn't like everything you like? Um, we talked a little bit about this earlier, but I think the big thing is one we can't be babies about this stuff like that is something that really frustrates me personally is when grown-ups feel like they have to put on some performance about not liking a food or whatever i mean if someone like really doesn't like something or isn't a fan of it like i can work with that and we can figure it out whatever but there's no need to do like these dramatics of ew gross that's disgusting ah! you know and like roll around on the floor like you're a three-year-old throwing a temper tantrum um so I think that's the first thing, you have to be grown ups about it. Me and Jason have different food preferences, but you know, if I, I'm making these Brussels sprouts, he'll have a couple because he knows that it's a good idea to still try foods, even if you haven't liked them in the past, because you might like them now, and just to have some and whatever. But he's probably not gonna load up his plate with it. Same with me, the mushrooms are not my favorite, but I'll get a couple and I'm not, you know, whatever. I make things that Jason doesn't like, I make things that Jason likes that I don't really like, um, and it's not a big production. So that's the first step. The second step is just keeping your preferences in mind. Um, usually you can find something that you both like and you can also make multiple things. So like with this, making a pan of mushrooms and a pan of Brussels sprouts really isn't any more work than just doing one of those. I mean, I had to chop them both up, but y'all saw that was pretty quick. Then you just go in the oven together. So I do that and then we both have an option. Um, so those are a couple things you can do and also Working in maybe things you don't enjoy as much with foods you do enjoy. So if for me, like I'm not a big cucumber fan, but I like a salad if it's like tomatoes and cucumbers and red onion and a little salt all mixed together. Great, delicious. So that's like a way that I do it. Um, for Jason, he's not really into zucchini, but if I make a big saute in the summer of zucchini and peppers and tomatoes and onions and ground beef and whatever, and we have roasted potatoes and some sauerkraut, like he doesn't not gonna pick out all the little pieces of zucchini that are chopped up super small, because they just kind of mix into everything and they taste fine. So those are a couple things that you can think about. Um, 
So yeah, I think we've covered everything. I'm gonna finish off these pork chops and then we are going to eat dinner, but I really enjoyed hanging out with all of you. I hope you enjoyed the live stream. And you know, come back next month, the first Thursday of every month is when we do these live cook with me. So it was a lot of fun. I hope you have a great evening or morning or afternoon or whatever time it is where you are watching this. And I will talk to you soon, bye.